Hey everybody, welcome back to Con Watch. The con we are watching today is the Book of Mormon. Once again, we've been watching it for a while, years really. And so we are now on 1st Nephi chapter 4. I tried recording this yesterday and some weirdness happened to the audio. So today I am doing better. So here we go. Chapter 4, we're not going to read the spoiler at the beginning, so I hope you didn't read it just now, because that will give away every single thing that happened. That's right, that one sentence or two sentences um, sums up all this really well, too, which really tells you how much they overwrote on this craziness. Okay. And it came to pass that I spake unto my brethren, saying, Let us go up again unto Jerusalem, and let us be faithful in keeping the commandments of the Lord. For behold, he is mightier than all the earth. Then why not mightier than Laban in his fifty, yea, or even his tens of thousands? So, um, this guy, Nephi, first Nephi, you might call him, is about to go to uh, the city of Laban to go start some trouble. And um, he's not too worried about his soldiers because he's got the Lord on his side. Therefore, let us go up. Let us be strong like unto Moses. The, the writing. The writing is so bad. There was good writing being published at this time. Uh... You know, this guy, uh, Joseph Smith, just decided to write this book badly. I don't know. For he truly spake unto the waters of the Red Sea, and they divided hither and thither, and our fathers came through, out of captivity on dry ground, and the armies of Pharaoh did follow, and were drowned in the waters of the Red Sea. So, yeah, um, he's saying we're going to be like Moses and... Uh, Laban is like the Pharaoh. I don't remember if Laban, Laban, Laban? I'm going to say Laban, even if that's wrong. I don't know exactly what he did because I don't remember the previous chapters very well. But um, this guy, Nephi, strikes me as an absolute psycho. And you'll see why. Now behold, ye know that this is true, and ye also know that an angel hath spoke un. To you, not unto thee. Oh, you said you instead of thee. Mm. You're going to be in trouble for that one. You're not going to heaven now. Wherefore can ye doubt? Let us go up. The Lord is able to deliver us, even as our fathers, and to destroy Laban, even as the Egyptians. So we're like these people, and we're going to destroy these people like these other people. So this. Were they slaves of Laban at some point? Now. I don't remember, but if they were slaves, then them murdering these people is totally justified, at least if it's to gain your freedom. But if you gained your freedom already, I don't know, doing it out of retribution, not too good. Doesn't sound too holy to me. But then again, I'm not a Mormon, so maybe I don't know what's holy. Now when I had spoken these words, they were yet wroth, and I looked this up before. Wroth means angry, and he could have said angry because angry was a word back then. But he didn't. He chose to write badly. And did still continue to murmur. Nevertheless, they did follow me up until we came without the walls of Jerusalem. Why would you come with the walls of Jerusalem? You don't bring them with you. They're walls. They're sitting on the ground. I know they actually mean that they came up to the outside of the walls. And they could have said that. They could have written it plainly so that everyone can understand. But they were stupid. And it was by night, and I caused that they should hide themselves without the walls. I caused that they should hide themselves. I think they mean like cause, like caution. I cautioned them to hide outside the walls. That's my guess. And after they had hid themselves, I, Nephi, crept into the city and went forth towards the house of Laban. Um, let's see. And I was led by the Spirit not knowing beforehand the things which I should do. Totally, I, di I totally didn't um, plan anything that I would do. La, 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 who's the spirit? Nevertheless, I went forth, and as I came 
Near unto the house of Laban I beheld a man, and he had fallen to the earth before me, for he was drunken with wine. So he snuck into the city and saw a drunk guy on the ground, helpless. And when I came to him, I found that it was Laban. Oh, plot twist. Wow, that's amazing. Real M. Night Shyamalan stuff here. And I beheld his sword. Uh, do you mean sword, or do you mean penis? And I drew it forth from the sheath thereof. Uh, and the hilt thereof was pure gold. Oh, he might mean a real sword. And the workmanship thereof was exceedingly fine. And I saw that the blade thereof was of the most precious steel. So precious. And it came to pass that I was constrained by the spirit that I should kill Laban. Constrained, doesn't that mean like stopped from doing something? But I think in this, he means the voices in his head told him to kill this helpless person. But I said in my heart, never at any time have I shed the blood of man. Why? Because you think it's wrong? And yet the voice in your head is telling you to do it? And I shrunk and would that I might not slay him. And the spirit said unto me again, and the voices in my head said unto me again, Behold, the Lord hath delivered him into thy hands. Yea, and I also knew that he had sought to take away mine own life. Yea, and he would not hearken unto the commandments of the Lord. And he also had taken away our property. Oh, well, there you go. You should kill him for that. He took your property. Do they mean women, or do they mean, like, real things? Um, yeah, so here he's saying, hey, I've got, I've got excuses. He made me mad. I can kill him if he made me mad. And it came to pass that the Spirit said unto me again, Slay him, for the Lord hath delivered him into thy hands. Kill him, he's helpless, he can't fight back. The voices in your head demand it. Behold, the Lord slayeth the wicked to bring forth his righteous purpose. It is better that one man should perish than a nation should dwindle and perish in unbelief. Except unbelief doesn't cause nations to dwindle and perish. So you're just making stuff up based on craziness and now when i nephi oh nephi that's who we're talking about i've i'd forgotten not uh had heard these words i remembered the words of the lord which he spake spoke dude spake it's not a word anymore maybe it was back then though i don't know this is the 1830s unto me in the wilderness saying that Inasmuch as thy seed shall keep my commandments, as in your children, they shall prosper in the land of promise. So, I, what does he mean by his commandments? Does he mean like the Ten Commandments, or does he mean like the 613 commandments? Probably not those. Yea, and I also thought that they could not keep the commandments of the Lord according to the law of Moses. Okay, so this is the 613. Save that they should have the law, save they should have the law. So even though the law applies to them, they're not keeping them, is so they should die. Yeah, that sounds nice and merciful and fair and good and loving. And I also knew that the law was engraven upon the plates of brass. Okay, so kind of like the, the Ten Commandments on the stones in the Ark of the Covenant that was recovered by um, Indiana Jones. And again, I knew that the Lord had delivered Laban into my hands for this cause, that I might obtain the records according to his commandments. Therefore I did obey the voice of the Spirit, and took Laban by the hair of the head, and I smote off his head with his own sword. Now note here that um, he picked him up by the hair, so he was basically vertical. I don't know, he was laying down, so maybe he didn't. he couldn't like pick him all the way up. But his head and neck were probably pretty close to vertical. And after I had smitten off his head with his own sword, I took the garments of Laban, which were probably covered in blood at this time, and put them upon mine own body. Yea, even every wit, even the underwear. Uh, they probably didn't have underwear back then. And I did gird on his armor about my loins. Does he mean like his loins area? Why would he have ar well, why wouldn't he have armor for that, I guess? And after I had done this, I went forth unto the treasury of Laban. And as I went forth towards the treasury of Laban, behold, I saw the servant of Laban, 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 who had keys of the treasury, had the keys of the treasury. 
And I commanded him in the voice of Laban that he should go with me into the treasury. <laughs> so he imitated Laban to him, and the guy just believed him, I guess. And he supposed me to be his master, Laban, for he beheld the garments and also the sword girded about my loins. I mean, who else would have a sword like that? Nobody. Nobody. And he spake unto me concerning the elders of the Jews. He knew that his master Laban had been out by night among them. And I spake unto him as if it had been Laban. And I also spake unto him that I should carry the engravings which were upon the plates of brass to my elder brethren who were without the walls. And I also bade him that he should follow me. So he told him that he needs to get the engravings on brass and bring them to some people outside of the walls, and that he should come with him. And he, supposing that I spake of the brethren of the church, and that I was truly that Laban whom I had slain, wherefore he did follow me. So he followed him because he thought he was telling the truth. But he wasn't, and it's not like there's a commandment about that, is there? No, of course not. No, he needs to keep the commandments except when it's inconvenient. And he spake unto me many times concerning the elders of the Jews, and I went forth upon, uh, unto my brethren who were without the walls. So he was trash-talking the Jewish elders, or maybe saying good things about them. Who knows? And it came to pass that when Laman saw me, he was exceedingly frightened, and also Lemuel and Sam. I think those are uh, Nephi's people. And they fled before my presence, from before my presence, for they supposed it was Laban and that he had slain me and had sought to take away their lives also, you know, all by himself, even though they had a bunch of people with them. And it came to pass that I called after them. Oh, it came to pass. It, it just happened that way. It came to pass. And they did hear me, wherefore did they did cease to flee from my presence. So he called them, and then they stopped running. And it came to pass that when the servant of Laban beheld my brethren, he began to tremble, and he was about to flee from before me and return to the city of Jerusalem. So the servant decided to run because the jig was up and he realized what was going on. And now I, Nephi, oh, Nephi, that's who's talking. I keep forgetting. Being a man large in stature and also having received much strength of the Lord, because he ate his Wheaties, therefore I did seize upon the servant of Laban and held him that he should not flee. So he threw his big fat weight around grabbed the servant. And it came to pass that I spake with him that if he would hearken upon, unto my words, as the Lord liveth, because the Lord could not liveth, and as I live, even so that if he would hearken unto our words, he would we would spare his life. So if you do what I say, no one gets hurt. And I spake unto him, even with an oath, that he need not fear, so he promised him that he doesn't have to be afraid, that he should be a free man like unto us he, uh, if, if he would go down to the wilderness with us. And I also spake unto him, saying, Surely the Lord hath commanded us to do this thing. I mean, surely. And shall we not be diligent in keeping the commandments of the Lord? Hey, we're just doing, we're just following orders. What, do you want us to disobey orders? Therefore, if thou wilt go down to the wilderness to my father, thou shalt have place with us. And it came to pass, things keep coming to pass, that Zoram did take courage at the words that I, which I spake. Now, Zoram was the name of the servant. You could have said that earlier, but this whole thing is badly written. And yet, tons of people believe it. And he promised that he would go down into the wilderness unto our father. Uh, yea, and he also made an oath unto us that he would tarry with us from that time forth. So he said, all right, I'll live with you guys. I'll go leave the nice city that I came from and go live in the wilderness with you guys, because that sounds much better. Now we were desirous that he should tarry with us for this cause, that the Jews might not know concerning our flight into the wilderness, lest they should pursue us and destroy us. So the only reason he offered this servant a place with them is so that he wouldn't go back to the city and alert the enemy. And it came to pass that when Zoram had made an oath unto us, our fears did cease concerning him. So he promised to be one of them, and they said, okay, and they believed him. 
Now, it's interesting that in the beginning they said, oh, well, we have the Lord on our side. We're, we're strong and mighty like Moses. We could run away real good. <laughs> and now here it's like, oh, well, I'm glad we didn't have to fight because, you know, we're not mighty at all. So they only trusted their Lord, Mormos, so much. And it came to pass that we took the plates of brass and the servant of Laban and departed, departed into the wilderness and journeyed unto the tent of our father. All right, so now we'll read the, the single sentence here. Nephi slays Laban at the Lord's command and then s secures the plates of brass by stratagem. Zoram chooses to join Lehi's family in the wilderness. And he didn't exactly choose it. He, he gave in to uh, threats. So there we go. That was Book of Mormon, 1st Nephi 4, where Nephi reveals himself to be a giant psychopath, murderous psychopath who obeys the voices in his head. Hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.